So in my owner's review of the NX Hybrid, I said this about the self-parking feature. So the NX can automatically park itself, whether front in, back in, or in parallel. Now, in my limited testing, it actually works fairly well. Definitely didn't stress the word limited enough, and fairly well should have came with a dozen asterisks. So after a few more months of ownership and a lot of more deliberate testing, today I want to showcase the Lexus NX self-parking feature in a variety of scenarios and share my final thoughts on whether or not the system is ultimately worth your time and money. Let's jump right in. And starting with the settings, so I can access self-park with this button here. Now this icon here is for registering a parking space. I'm going to circle back to that towards the end of the video. So the first setting is speed profile, basically how fast the vehicle is allowed to move on its own. Fast is just acceptable. I wouldn't set it any slower than this. Detect range, so this is how far the car can come into an object before it decides it needs to correct its course. I think even on standard, it's pretty conservative. If you set it to far, it just ends up correcting the course a lot more and it just takes a lot longer. So I think standard is just fine. Now the next two, park method and park direction. So these two settings determine your default, most commonly used parking method. So right now I have it on perpendicular reverse, AKA just backing into a spot. So anytime I engage the system, the first suggestion is almost always gonna be reverse back in. Uh, and even if this first suggestion is not what you want, you can always change it to the correct orientation. Uh, however, sometimes if you set it to parallel though, uh, it can have some pretty comical suggestions. So make sure you always do like a physical sanity check of whether or not the parking spot makes sense before uh, you engage the system. Uh, parking view and exit view. So these are just the camera angles. I usually just leave them on wide. Now road width adjustment actually makes a pretty big difference. So they're standard and then down to narrow, basically how much of the opposite lane that the car is allowed to use. So let's say in the back end scenario, if it's narrow, the car just drives forward and then back in. If it's on standard, it'll kind of do a diagonally forward and then back in, which is a lot more natural. And with this system, honestly, it's not just about how accurate and smooth it is. It's also about how natural it is. Do other drivers know what you're trying to do? And so for that reason, I just generally leave it in standard. It's a lot more natural. Now this is parking position. So when you're going front in, do you like further in or further out? Uh, same thing with reverse. Do you like all the way in or somewhere in the middle? Now rear accessory. So if you have a trailer, this can take into account of that distance and register parking space. So I'm going to circle back to this um, towards the end. So now let's go take a look at some parking scenarios. All right, now before we engage the system, there's a couple of things that we need to do. So we need to be in drive, obviously, and the vehicle action needs to be perfectly still. Now, the best practice is to make sure that your front door is aligned with the spot you're trying to go into. And then I can press the steering wheel with the P and there we can see all the selection. Notice that it's not showing anything on the left-hand side. So actually, if I want to park on the right-hand side, I have to be in the right lane. If I want to park in the left, left hand side I have to be in the left lane that goes for reverse or and uh, front end so you might already start to see the issue uh, normally for front end I can just pull to the left right now but I can't do that here um, because I need to align my front door to the spot so let me show let's say if I wanted to be in this spot and I'm gonna select front end so that's I'm, I'm already here right like this is a very awkward position to start the front end so let's let's see what it does and it actually will do this really weird it's gonna go all the way forward and then it's gonna do a uh, diagonal reverse it's really weird like nobody parks like this and there's actually, there's a guy giving me a weird look already. And <laughs> this is why I would, I've almost never used the, uh, the front end um, with this automated system because like, who the hell, who the, <laughs> who the hell fronts in like this? It's, it's, oh God, that guy, all right. That, that, that guy wouldn't stop looking at me and for good reasons. Um, yeah, but like, otherwise, um, once the parking operation completes, it shows you the 360 view. Accuracy is great. It's just the front end is super unnatural because if people don't know what you're, what you're trying to do and they try to cut you off, um, you're just not going to have a good time. 
just make, again, make sure my front door is aligned and then I can press the P button. So I'm going to reverse into the same exact spot this time. But uh, actually, you can see that sometimes this, this camera glitches out. In this case, the only way that you'll know if you're doing front end or back end is through this icon. So this is your back end and this is your going front end. So I'm going to do back end. Lexus, please fix this. Start. So my uh, road width usage setting is on standard, so not narrow. So that's why it's doing this uh, diagonal um, forward and then diagonally back in, which is by far the most natural um, reverse method. And I have no problem with the system doing this because every, like people will understand that's exactly what you're trying to do. Like people will know right off the bat you're trying to back in. Um, and yeah, how naturally the system behaves is a pretty big deal. So again, actually it's a tiny bit off center to the left hand side, but otherwise still pretty good. So that back in was just to parking lines without any cars nearby. So now we're going to try to park in between two cars. So now I front doors aligned, I'm stopped, press this button and reverse, go. perfectly centered in the spot between two cars left and right so again if I want to park on the left hand side I need to be on the left lane front door aligned press this button and start to park so this time I am between a car and the edge of the curb I, I really, <laughs> I just like playing around with the uh, the back end whenever I can. It's, uh, it's actually kind of fun. Again, perfectly in the middle. If it can just be like 20% faster, the back end will be perfect. The front end needs some work. I really should be able to detect the uh, left hand. Now, let's go try uh, other parking methods. Okay, so trying out parallel parking for the first time. Now I need to change the orientation and start. So really I'm just aligning like roughly the whole car with the spot before I start. Let's see, this, uh, this is actually a pretty big spot. So in the manual it does say that it is referencing how tightly the other cars are parked relative to the curb. So if they're really close to the curb, then the system is also going to try and park really close to the curb, which has a higher chance of it failing if it detects that it's coming way too close to the curb and it kind of freaks out. It doesn't really know um, what to do there. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Again, align the car with the spot. I do need to spin that and off we go. And yeah, you can see it's crossing the line completely. It's really just referencing the car in the back there. And if you're getting a little nervous of how close the uh, vehicle is getting to other objects, you can always gently tap on the brake to slow down the system. Um, if, you, if you completely break, the system will ask you, uh, do you want to cancel? <laughs> but... Uh, okay... Stop... Oh, this time it didn't uh, it recommend a parallel right away. It's a little excruciating to see it like finesse, taking so long to finesse the last little... <laughs> okay, so in this case, it, it, it's basically in the spot, but it's saying it actually kind of faults it out. And this happens sometimes if it... Remember I said that if the cars are parked way too close to the curb and the car gets like as you're backing in, you yourself gets too close to the curb, uh, the system will just freak out and say, oh shit, the... Uh, can't cannot continue to execute and then it will basically abort the operation leaving you kind of 
45 degrees halfway sticking out. I'm not quite sure why I decided that it needed to fault out. It seemed pretty clear. This spot doesn't have any lines. Though this is kind of tight. Let's see if I can fit in here. Maybe. Ooh, that's tight. Let's see what happens. I feel like I've just locked myself into like 10 corrections. Oh boy, yes. I'm actually really surprised that it didn't fault out. Um, I feel like I've been in far less trickier situations and then it came halfway in and then it just decided okay i don't know what to do anymore and then it aborts itself and then now i'm stuck at a 45 degree that's good this is actually really good um it's a little bit far from the curb though but yeah after like 10 tries not bad and last but not least let's circle back to the parking space registration which is this icon here but very quickly this feature is meant for if you were to park in a regular spot in a very specific way. So let's go through the prompts. So at first it'll ask you, are you parallel parking or doing perpendicular? I'm going to register a reverse in. So I'm going to reverse in this way, click OK. And now this is what it's really for. So you can customize the exact parking space that you want. So let's say for example if there was a pillar here, imaginary pillar, and I want to stay away from the pillar as much as possible. So I'm almost, I'm gonna stick as far as I can to uh, the left hand side. And let's say I want to have access to my trunk, so I'm gonna park far out. So I have my nose sticking out like that. Click OK and it's gonna give you a preview. It's gonna to save to spot number three because that's the only one that's available. Start. And once the parking operation is done, it will ask you to check your surroundings to say, hey, is this really the, uh, the space that you want to register? Or it'll give you a final chance to adjust even further. So again, uh, let's say if there's an imaginary uh, column here, I wanna stay away from that as much as possible. And I want to have a little more space in the back so I can access my trunk. Okay, register. So now that completes, it's now saved to parking space number three. So now having gone through all of that, the next time that I approach this spot and start the uh, self park, it's gonna recognize right away, hey, this is actually uh, spot number three. So it's definitely very niche. It's, an, it's a good idea, but it's not gonna apply to a lot of people. Like if you live in a house, we park in a driveway or a garage, this is gonna be useless. But if you live in an apartment and you have a designated spot, or if you go to work and there's a de designated spot as well, and for whatever reason, you park in those spots in a very specific way, feel free to register and it's gonna be pretty handy. So some final thoughts on the NXL park right off the bat I would not bother with the front end It is way too awkward and honestly it could lead to a really big mess in a busy parking lot now for the Back end it works really well I've almost never had a single back end fail and the only real issue is that sometimes it fails to detect the parking lines to start um, There's a laundry list of reasons in the manual of why it could potentially fail to detect but bottom line is it's pretty rare now for the parallel it's decent it's still very usable it's just that sometimes it fails halfway leaving you kind of stuck uh, deciding do you restart or just finish the rest of the way in so the the system is not perfect by any means but it is far from a half-baked gimmick now in Canada advanced park is only included in the executive package but at that point you will be picking the package for like Mark Levinson speakers um, but in the US, Advanced Park is a completely separate option that is not bundled into anything else. So I'd say it's definitely worth it if you're really struggling with parking and the majority of your parking is back in with the occasional parallel. And that wraps it up for the NX Self Park. If you'd like to learn more about the NX Hybrid, make sure to check out my full owner's review. I know there's been a lot of interest for an update on long-term ownership, new rims, new tires, general winter experience. I do apologize for the delay, but I like to get through most of the winter first, just to make sure that I don't miss anything insightful to share. So thank you for your patience. Please stay tuned. It's coming. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, shoo.